Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fight UK 8 here at the Athena in Leicester. I'm Ben Cartledge and with me as always, Dangerous David Letherby and what a card we've got for you tonight. Headed up by those three title fights in the flyweight division, we've got Mark Handley, very well ranked in the UK, taking on undefeated Chris Meir. Yeah, Ben, fantastic fight on paper. Mark Handley ranked in the top 20 in the flyweight division in the UK. He's a very, very tough test for anybody. Chris Meir coming in defeated is definitely his sternest test today. Very, very interesting bout. Following that up, we've got the heavyweight title fight on the line as Polish monster Mikhail Andrzejczak takes on local boy and big knockout striker himself, James Horrell. A lot of people predicting, Dave, this one's not going to go the distance. Andrzejczak, he's an unbelievable athlete, Ben. Great agility. He's a young guy. He's got head kick wins on his record. Don't blink. This one could be over quickly. And the main event of the evening that's got them all talking, the middleweight title fight between two undefeated fighters in Matt Hallam and Yannick Bahati, two of the best prospects in the sport meeting at this point in the career. A lot of people very excited about this, Dave. Yeah, hugely exciting bout. And like you say, Ben, a credit to both guys for meeting each other at this stage of the career. They could easily avoid these kind of matches, you know, build their record further. But no, they're going to meet here in the Athena tonight. Both have brought hundreds of fans. It's going to be explosive. Both guys have knockout power. It's going to be a cracker. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get on with the action. Opening bout of the evening here at Fight UK 8 as we see Dan Beckett from Shudan against Ahmed Azwad from the Pariah Gym. My name's Ben College. With me as always, the dangerous one himself, David Letherby. What a card we have got lined out tonight, Dave. Four title fights, 14 action-packed bouts. Yes, Ben, it really is stacked top to bottom, this card. Ali Petit and the Fight UK group, they've done a great job with this card. I'm really impressed with it. The title fights, as you say, Ben, are so close. And I mean, look at the shape. Some of these amateur guys are coming in. These two guys now look absolutely stripped at the weight. It's going to be a very interesting bout. As word coming out of the pariah gym. Uh, we always talk about it, Ben. At this level, it's all about handling those nerves. How are you going to handle that adrenaline dump? And more and more we're seeing as each show goes on, the level is getting higher and higher. So here we go, amateur action in the welterweight division. Opening fight of the evening here at Fight UK 8. Ahmed Azwad in the black shorts against Dan Beckett in the green shorts. And Beckett clipping a nice left hook there as Azwad comes in and a huge power wow. takedown. And an explosive athlete like that, Dave, we always speculated that he'd be able to pull something like that in it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we speak about the skill and it, you just also you got to look at the conditioning in terms of this amateur scene and how it's going on because Ahmed Azwad Ben looks absolutely stripped at welterweight, looks in great shape and now looking for the mount. Becker did a very good job there of closing the door, locking up half guard instead. But Azwad, as you say, looks a real powerhouse at this weight and that was evident with that huge pickup and slam right at the start there. That's why it's sitting down a little bit on his top control. If he can free that left leg and get full mount on, and a nice escape from Beckett there. That's why really swinging. Chasing his man down. Beckett backing up as well, he might. A little bit of a feeling out process now for the guys on the feet. 
Beckett needs to get that jab working as I say that, pumps it out. He's got to keep the bigger man Aswad away from him because you saw how lethal that double was as he picked up his man earlier. Beckett taking the middle of the cage well here, Ben. Beckett, for me, Dave, the, the ranger of the two, I think he's probably got a little in reach, and like you say, establishing that jab early would be a real good thing for him to do against a powerful athlete like Ahmed Aswad. Yeah, Aswad, you've got to think, oh, nice right hand clipping over the top from Beckett there. Beckett's he's finding his rhythm a little bit, Dave. He's getting a bit more confidence after what, what would be not the best start for him, but now he's back up on his feet, and it seems like this is where he wants it to be. Well, that's it, Ben. Of course, at this level, a lot of these guys don't know too much about their opponents before the fight. There's not much video footage out there. And at least now, from Beckett's point of view, he knows that Aswad is a very tough customer when he's in top position, so he knows to avoid that and try and work this striking game. Beckett flicking that jab out over the outside. Aswad lunges in for a powerful strike. He's got to be careful of letting that hand dip as he does that. Once again, it's Beckett with the center of the cage. There's a quick one too, but doesn't find his range. And now it's Aswad moving forward. Real nip and tuck and counter this, Dave. Opening fight of the night. Really is, Ben. And ultimately, we see with these three-minute rounds that it's often very minute things in between the two fighters on the scorecards. And, and Beckett, I, I think he's done well in this second part of the round. A, a very difficult round to score. Oh, that's a big left. Deep left hook. But then Aswad immediately takes it into a takedown. Great, great style matchup here at Fight UK. Almost looking like the classic striker versus grappler, Ben, at this point. Great presence of mind from Aswad there as he was hit really, really hard with that clubbing left hook. Becky doing the right thing, holding on. So it goes the distance. Very, very difficult round to score, Ben. Uh, on my scorecard and I say that from the point of view of, you know we're obviously calling the fight it's very hard to judge from this position I probably give the edge to Aswad on takedowns Ben I don't know about you I could say a very close one Dave Aswad having his moments with the big takedowns getting top position as he did but Beckett looking the more comfortable on the feet clipping his man with a couple of shots and in Beckett's corner we see Martin Sheridan there Respected fighter here at Fight UK, we've seen him battle a number of times. Great level of experience for these guys on the amateur undercard to have those pro fighters in the corner who they know have been there themselves, who've done the rounds in the trenches. Yeah, certainly, Ben. I mean, the game plan is often the difference at this level. And as I alluded to earlier, these guys often don't know much about the, their opponent's pre-fight. But during the bout, now their corner men have had a chance to get a solid rounds look. And now where these fighters go and the instruction they've been given could be very important this second round. I think Dan Beckett, for me, Ben, is going to try and get on his bike and work those strikes on the outside again. Commissioner for the evening, Leon Roberts, clears the cage as we get ready for the second round between Dan Beckett in the green and Ahmed Aswad in the black shorts. Great entertaining first round this. It'll be interesting to see, as you say, the instruction from the corner. It's clear what Beckett needs to do. He needs to establish that jab and he needs to stay on the end of his punches. And Aswad looking to get underneath, create some good angles. That's it from Aswad's point of view. He's keep that low posture. I like that. He's got his chin tucked in. He's keeping the head movement going try and work himself in underneath one of those jabs and maybe look for another big takedown. He's landed two already in this fight. And as you say, David, with that posture, he's less of a static target as well. Oh, and the, both fighters caught each other there. He's swinging a little bit wild now. The posture is everywhere at that point. Wow, both chins were out to dry then, Ben. That's a miracle. A miracle we didn't get a big knockout blow then because both those guys were swinging. Not the most orthodox, the, the Stretch Armstrong school of striking almost. You know, we keep saying it, Ben, it's so much about the, the mind as it is the body at this level. And these guys, they are liable to just have that mad 10 seconds because, you know, they haven't got the experience of the season pros. <laughs> Big pick up and take down once again, and that's yet another one from Ahmed Aswad. Phenomenally powerful as he moves into side control, maybe looking to isolate an arm, if you can get ahead an arm from this position. So often we see Dave, the powerful fighters really love the submissions that are a real kind of grinding pace. Difficult to see for a vantage point, Ben, but I'd like to see Dan Beckett moving back in towards 
Aswad, rather than almost leaning away at this point. He's got to try and move towards his man, maybe snake a leg back in, try and gain some sort of half guard. Easier said than done with a massive unit like Aswad on top of you. And some knees underneath, not usually the best plan, of course. But Dan Beckett in this position, he really needs to make the most of his posture. And like you say, Dave, try and roll in a little bit. Well, that's the difficulty, Ben, with these three-minute rounds as well. It's just everything, as far as scrambles and escapes, has got to be, you know, twice as urgent. Because on the judges' scorecard, if you're on the bottom here, you're losing the fight. You make a very good point, Dave. We look at percentages, like you say. A fighter who's able to take a man down and hold him down for maybe a minute and a half in a professional round still gives his opponent some time to work, some time to do something. In these amateur scenarios, the three-minute rounds, that is half the round that he's controlled. And the fighter on the bottom left with a lot to do, as I believe Dan Beckett is here in the second round. Yeah, Dan Beckett certainly looks up against it in the grappling exchanges. Aswad's takedowns, Ben, as the second period ended. I've been hugely impressed with his takedowns. The double, I mean, let's face it, Dan Beckett's not showing a, a whole lot of defense there. There's, he hasn't really been spooling or, or trying to work in the, the underhooks. But Aswad, you know, the guy's like a freight train. When he gets in on that double leg, it looks very, very difficult to defend. And like you said, if he's getting so deep in on that double that it's very, very hard for him to effectively sprawl at that point at the point where he should be pushing back and getting his hips. What you're finding is that Aswad's already grabbed those legs and he's able to transition, power it upwards and slam him down on the canvas. And it becomes more about damage limitation at that point. If you get a ferocious wrestler like that, or you're struggling to stop the takedowns off, a lot of times you think, you stop thinking, how am I gonna stop this takedown? And as it's happening, you think to yourself, right, how am I gonna adjust when I hit the floor? Certainly, and you know, as we said, we're not sure exactly how the judges got the scorecard, but from Beckett's point of view, perhaps needing a stoppage. He's got to let the strikes, you know, hang out there. He's got to throw the bigger strikes. But of course, adversely, that leaves him more open to the takedown. Difficult, difficult plan of action here in this third period for Dan Beckett. Going to be interesting to see how he goes about business here in this welterweight contest. Really close fight, this, and a hallmark of the Fight UK events. We see some great matchmaking from the team. Very evenly matched fires, these. The left hook looks open for Aswad Beckett holding that hand low and as they say another another excellent trademark takedown from Ahmed Aswad. And what Aswad's doing is what he did really well in the last time, moving to side control and using base and posture to dictate that. Beckett looking a lot of leg of and sweep if he can get around. It looks like he's almost got himself back up to guard, and that's very good, but he's got to work from here, Dave. He can't just close the guard. Yeah. Kind of hang out there, isn't it? As I said, that he does scrambles back up to his feet, and now this is where he needs it. And surely for me, his corner have got to tell him that he's got to make something happen. Yeah, certainly, he's really got to get active here. I was impressed with how he got up in that scramble. Ben almost looked to take the back there. And now back on his feet. Dan Beckett's got to let these punches go. He's shown power early on in the first round when he caught his man. Lovely little short hook there, Ben. Very nice shot, that. And once again, that's what's got to be careful leaving that chin. But equally, back it as he throws those punches with reckless abandon. Both fighters swinging really wild in this third round. Beckett definitely looking for that big right hand here. Looking to measure up his man. And once again, in for the double and down and that. Dave has been the story of this fight. Dan Beckett unable to deal with the power doubles from Ahmed Aswad. Yeah, excellent game plan being well put together from Aswad's team over there at Pariah. They've obviously been working their man with the takedowns and he's done excellently well. He's employed the game plan to a T. What I'd like to see Ben from Aswad now is a, a bit more work in this position. You know, he's been very positionally dominant. He's obviously heavy on top, but, you know, in his future bouts, he's going to have to get busier with the strikes and, and the subs and, and even the position changes because referees in a five-minute round will, will certainly be more likely to stand you up. Aswad quite clever there for me, though, Dave. Noticed the, the posture of the referee in terms of maybe he was about to stand it up, and here we see as he does stand it up.
Dan Beckett's corner, calling for him to let his hands go. Are we going to see one last flurry from you'd Beckett? To, you'd have to think that Beckett's going to really let him go here. I'll have to try and let him go, but that takedown power from Aswad, as we speculated at the start, a real powerful individual. Yeah, very, very difficult to combat. Looking, raise those legs high, maybe for a trap for an armbar here. Ten. Shrugged off by Aswad. And there we go, the end of the contest. So we never like to speculate on the scores from our position, Ben, but it's difficult to see how Dan Beckett could have picked up that win there. Ahmed Aswad really did shine, Ben, in terms of the takedowns in the top position. A very good point there, Dave. Beckett knew what he wanted to do, he just wasn't able to implement it. He had periods where he looked good standing up, but overall, as you say, Ahmed Azwar did very well with the takedowns. And what was a fantastically close and well contested opening bout of the evening here at Fight UK 8. As we take it over for the official decision. go Dave batten down the hatches and set off the unit alarm heavyweight action between Eagle Gunner in the camo shorts Patrick Chimelowski in the black shorts Gunner straight in for the double can't quite complete it though shrugged off Ben the sheer size and strength of Patrick Chimelowski and it is he tapping Ben it's all over it's all over as quickly as it began very difficult to see from our advantage point what he was tapping out for referee Dean Weir he was on case to uh, to call it straight away the fighters are shaking hands I can only assume Ben some sort of choke or strangle but like I say from our position it was basically impossible with both guys having their back to us incredibly quick finish this as many thought there might be Eagle Gunner went in for that takedown got the position right but just didn't have the power to take his man up and over and Chimilowski landed on top and early on that's the worst position to for anybody to be in a heavyweight fight, you don't want to be the man on the bottom. 
And the pressure it looked like from Chmielewski was simply too much for Gunnar to take. division here of Fight UK. Stack card here at the Athena. Really looking forward to this one. Three three-minute rounds of action in this for Fight UK amateur featherweight division. Craig Powell with the black shorts with a camouflage decal against Jack Young in the black board shorts. Powell starting off well, flicking those kicks out there. Young moving around the outside more. Nice pushing kick to the body there from Powell. Yeah, good work from Powell here. He's taking the center of the cage for this feeling out process, Ben. Nice head kick. Just good pick up and Great slam. Take down from Jack Young. Let's see what these guys are offering on the ground. By the way, Jack Young really turned the corner down on that big takedown. This young looks like he's trying to posture for a bit of ground and pound. Obviously, no elbows under the amateur rule set, but punches are allowed, and that's exactly what got the knee ride there. And as I say that, Powell closes the door a little bit. Looks to land the, close the guard off. He's got the knee shield there. Yeah, you can already see, Ben, early on, both these guys very well versed on the ground. Real chest battle going on now. Powell does well to regain that full guard. Now let's see if he starts to go on the offense himself. Closes the door a little bit with a full guard, and now he's got a feet on the hip. It goes to show, even at this amateur level, that fighters very aware of the difficulties presented by sitting in the closed guard, especially against good top guys. Jack Young, I don't think he's going to be inclined to let his guy up. He's had some success in top position, so as long as the referee lets him stay here, I'll say that he moved scramble. beautifully to side control in that scramble. We've said it before, Ben, these three-minute rounds, you've really got to get on your bike. This is some great top control from Jack Young thus far in this first period. It just goes to show, we see it so many times, Dave, the level of fighters, even at the amateurs, we see the knee ride transition in map, but can't quite hold it. The scrambles from these two of a really high level, and just goes to show the elevated level that we're seeing in the, the amateur rule sets now. Nice shot there. Yeah, Jack Young. Oh, and a good up kick. Just about the same and Young starting to get some more accuracy on those shots. Another scramble from Young's point of view, Ben. Obviously, he's going to be disappointed not being able to pass the guard, but he's still in top position. It's been quite a dominant round for him thus far. Bit of a stalemate in action now. Referee base Singh taking a close look. Calling for a little more action from the guys. From Young's point of view, I mean, 
the guard really is wide open at that point of his opponent. That's what he needs to do, and that's what he's done. He's still looking maybe to throw the legs aside and punch. Yeah, he's had success from this standing position already. It's the end of the first round. Close back and forth encounter. From Jack Young's point of view, though, he'll know when his, his corner come in that they'll be happy that if, if nothing else, he spent the bulk of the time on top. Yeah, and Craig Powell, although he did well to regain position in some scrambles, did well to gain the full guard, didn't really look dangerous off his back then. He wasn't really looking for any subs. He wasn't chucking the legs up looking for arm bars or triangles. So from Jack Young's point of view, although he can't get too comfortable, he does know that there's a bit of a sweet spot for him in this top position. If he can get the takedown again, he's already landed some ground and pound. He's got a bit of a set out game plan now for the rest of the bout. I mean, from Craig Powell's point of view, he took the center of that cage. He looked the slightly more comfortable for me on the feet, Ben, in the short time we saw him stood up. So I, I think he's going to come out and try and maybe work some low kicks and, and work a bit of a tie game. It's going to be a very interesting second round here. See how this one goes in the Fight UK featherweight division here in the Athena. Second round underway. Powell in the black trunks with a camouflage decal. His opponent Young in the black board shorts. It's Young coming in for the takedown again. Tries to get the hip toss. Beautiful. Takes his man over. Beautiful posture and balance shown by Jackson. Maybe looks like good for an arm. Spins around to try and get it. He's really committed to this. It becomes a battle at this point. Young knows exactly what he needs to do, and he's postured up now. Taking Powell's his time nicely, Ben, excuse me. Powell's in a really bad spot here. He needs to really figure out what he's going to do in terms of defending. Yeah, then he needs to roll through and compress his man down. He's got to look at that armbar, and there's the tap. Beautiful, well executed from Jack Young. We said in the first round, Dave, when he got the fight to the ground, he needed to make more of it. Mission accomplished there. Yeah, you definitely saw the urgency there. He had that first round in the bag, felt comfortable in the ground position, and the second round was where he went for the attacks. Brilliant work from Jack Young, a textbook armbar finish. Great stuff from the featherweight here at Fight UK. Great win.
Back to the welterweight division here at Fight UK 8. As Jan Magic in the white shorts takes on crowd favorite Shane Flaherty in the black shorts. Magic certainly looks big at the weight, Ben. Slovakian unit coming down here for this welterweight contest. Flicking those kicks out as Mojic. Flatty working on the outside, trying to establish his range early. A little smile from Mojic from the low kick. Hard to gauge. Often means would it actually hurt? So often we see it, a bit of gamesmanship maybe. Magic coming in with those kicks again. Not a lot on him, just range finders more than anything. Often used to set up the big punches as we saw there. Flatty with some good head movement, keeping out of the way. Interesting, interesting process from both guys at the moment, both trying to get the low kicks going. I think it's the fight that's going to put them both together, Ben. Use some hands and an end on a low kick that's going to get the success. Both nice guys. jab from Flatty there. Excuse me, Dave, and you make yeah. a good point. Both guys looking for single strikes at the moment. But as you say, Ben, Flatty getting that jab work in there. Mojic, haven't seen much up. Say that, shoots him for a single. The Shane Flaherty gets it, moves immediately to side control. Very well disguised takedown there, Ben. Mojic's got a hold of the head and he's really squeezing tight, but really not able to do a lot from that position unless he shuts the guard. And that's exactly what Flaherty's seen that he's trying to do, and he's looking to crucifix the arm if he can. Yeah, the desperately grasping onto the head in side control is... Often a bit of a marker for a, a more of a novice on the ground, Ben, but he did try and snake in and, and get that half guard, so definitely has some grappling experience, Mojic. Flatty working around, just trying to free the head if he can, going to fight the hands. He pulls the hands and gives himself a little bit more breathing room. But the danger here from Mojic's point of view, Dave, is, is quite simply burning those arms out constantly straining you get a build up of lactic acid that comes very quickly yeah i mean you very very rarely see oh and i say that ben flatty moves straight to the back starts landing some punches oh and it's the end of the round wow furious action to end the round there shane flatty he was on his back like a flash ben from mojic's point of view as i was just going to say ben he's you know he's holding on to the head like you say not only is he going to burn his arms out he's also not offering any sort of defense but saying that Shane Flaherty waited his chance and as soon as there was that little window for a scramble there he was right on his man's back and I think Ben from Flaherty's point of view I mean he's got the blueprint here surely he's going to be looking to get this fight to the floor again because stood up it did look quite even The gulf on talent, certainly an experience more obvious when the fight the canvas. As you say, Flaherty stood up. Both fighters are landing a little. Flaherty, for me, maybe a little bit more technical, specifically with the jab and the head movement, something we see quite a lot from fighters at this level working very well. But as you say, Mojic held on to that hand, held on to that head, and just kept that position locked in. But as soon as there was a gap, as you say, Flatty was like a flash taking his man's back and a couple more a couple more seconds on that route, it could have been a different story. As Shane Flatty in the black shorts comes out for round two. Magic in the white shorts. As you say, Dave, the bigger the fire, but bigger the two fighters, but it's Flatty to me, the more disciplined and nice fly knee attempt there. Very acrobatic. Yeah, Flatty really growed in confidence here, Ben, you can see. He's not fearing the takedown, so he's letting loose a little more now. Excellent jab and low kicks already in this round. He's 
going to look for that right hand over the top end, I think, or maybe even a right high kick. And I say that, Ben, beautifully disguised into a single. I, I love the way he's mixing it up there, Flaherty. <laughs> going to be interesting to see him on the back now, though, as Mojic gets a takedown of his own. Mojic, a real power takedown as Flaherty looks to ice that arm, maybe for a triangle choke. Look to sweep if you can. Obviously, no twisting leg locks from this position, but straight. Straight Achilles holds, we can see. Knee bars as well, obviously. Yeah, looking very busy here, Flaherty. Corners never want to see their fighter with their back flat to the ground, and Flaherty's doing a good job of moving his posture, just looking for an angle. Perhaps create a gap to either strike or get away. A very active guard here, looking for the triangle. Triangle choke over the top, beautiful. Always like that end, and this looks a very tough spot for Moji to get out of. That is a tight triangle choke, and he's hook, underhooking the leg as well, so his man can't. And now he focuses on pulling the head down. How oh, is Mojic surviving this? Maybe looking to pick up his man and slam out, but I don't think he's got the gas to slam out. Was that a tap? No, it didn't. He wasn't that. There. There's the tap. Disappointed Yang Mojic, but wow, what a victory for Shane Flaherty. Looked great on the feet there, mixed up with takedowns, and then once he was back on it, on the ground, I mean, there was a real golfing class there. Brilliant triangle, secured the leg to stop him stand up initially, then transferred both hands to the back of the head just to squeeze that last bit of air out of Jan Mojic, forcing the tap. Excellent win for Shane Flaherty. So action once again here at Fight UK 8. I'm at a portion of our card as we see Bartek Marek in the black shorts against Leicester Shoot Fighters Ranjit Barrier in the white and purple shorts. Ranjit Barrier, a fight we've seen before, they have a great grappling pedigree, but as I say that, answers with a beautiful one too. Yeah, I don't know too much about Marek other than, oh, looks hurt with the left hook there early doors. Barrier showing some crisp hands early here. As I said before, Barrier, as we've seen him before, known as a very strong grappler, but he's really shown an element to his game and takes the back of his opponent. It's a clinical performance. 
from Barry Adess. Marek really struggling. Yeah, he was eager to avoid the striking range, Ben, and now he's eager to avoid the grappling range because Ranjit Barry was all over him at this stage. Both hooks in, stood up, fighting the hands. He looks to have the choke in now. Sorry, he looks to have the left arm around the throat. He did look like he had that choke in, but he's got the body triangle in position. He's just left it, now he's got a standard hooks. This is a very, very tough spot. From Barry's point of view, Ben, he's got so much time. He can just take his time here, soften his man up with strikes, look for the choke again. Marek really struggling from this point of view. Barry, like you say, anchoring himself in a huge pick on the summit. All that's done is suck him deeper into the rear naked choke. He strips the hands and does well, but now maybe you're looking for the palm on palm if he's got it. The short choke. And as much as a choke, we could just see a finish from the neck crank here, Dave. Have to credit Bartek Marek, Ben. Shown some great heart, hasn't come here to roll over, fights the hands. He's coming from Poland via Wolverhampton. He's no stranger to wars. The control barrier exhibiting has been flawless and now there's a tough spot as he flattened his man out. Looks to land some strikes. Those hooks anchored in. Marek really struggling. does show, Ben, how difficult it is, even for a seasoned grappler like Barrier, to get the chokes on with these larger amateur gloves especially. It's very difficult to get those chokes secured in. You make a very good point. And now to almost a half mount off back position, some tough shots. But Marek's really struggling under there. Heavy ground and pound from Ranjit Barrier. Now maybe looking for an armbar if he can grab it. Wow. Wow, Bartek Marek survives. What a transition. As Marek came flying forward, Barrier a little overzealous in pursuing him. It's the end of the round. Ten more seconds, but Barrier swims the legs up. He's got the guard nice and high. Wow, what an opening round performance from Ranjit Barrier all over his man, Marek. On the feet, on the ground, what a whirlwind. Had his back for a large portion of the round, wasn't able to sink the choke, but landed some heavy ground and pound. Ben, Barrier looks hugely impressive here tonight. Barrier's a guy that we've seen, as I say, quite a few times, an ever-improving prospect. And Marek's done well in, in reality to make it out of that round. He was in some tough spots a lot of the time. I'm surprised that he elected to fall backwards and try and shake his man that way because all that did for Barry was lock that choke in a little bit tighter but credit to Marek for toughing it out and not tapping it looked very close at one point I think the fact was that it was a little more under the chin than it was under the neck that may have saved him in the end but as you say I mean Marek wasn't able to find any solace on the ground when it when it took the fight came to the floor but Barry looked very dangerous on the feet to start things off yeah it's difficult to see where Marek is going to want to take this fight now He's certainly got the one thing you can't train for, Ben, and that's a fighter's heart. So let's see what goes on in this second period. Base sink calls the fighters. Marek backing up as Barrier looking to take the center of the octagon. You can tell already, Dave. Barrier's looking to strike. Establishes that jab nicely. Some bruising on the head of Marek. Look at the lazy hook from Barrier there. So he's got his composure. The hooks are definitely there for him, the left hook in particular. Barrier's corner from Leicester Street Fighters telling him to be patient, not to force anything. The big head kick from Barrier doesn't quite land. The barrier coming in, swinging wildly. Be careful of overcommitting, shaking the arms out a little bit. Marek queuing up some sort of spinning kick there. This might take something unorthodox like that to take Barrier out of his game. Barrier throwing single shots, then that's the problem. There's a nice bruising right hook. Barrier's coming forward. Marek's got to be very careful, Dave, because as he's retreat retreating, excuse me, his chin is wide, wide open. Yeah, head back. He's dropping his hands as well, Ben. Very 
very dangerous game to play against Barrier. I think he's Marek is looking for some sort of hike. He seems to be measuring towards the right side there. But he's in danger of eating a big left hook. The mouth wide open. He's taking a lot of shots and just trying to shrug him off. But Barrier's up. He rocks the head back with an amazingly good jab. Technically perfect from Barrier. That's what Barrier's got to look to do, Ben. That's what his corner wants to see him do. Look to counter and put these combinations together, not look for the big the big one shots. Get that jab working. Both fighters landed in that exchange. Marek is so game, Ben. Still coming forward, but he's got to be careful of his hands in those exchanges. Barrier, as you say, being a little more cerebral in the second round. Sat into the fight a little bit, and I think he appreciates the toughness of his opponent. But to be fair, I mean, we talked about him, he's been the defensive quite a lot, but he's withstood these tremendous punishments. But once again, he's got to be careful of circling backwards. Chin really up on a flagpole. Beautiful left hand from Barrier. Blood trickling down the nose now with Bartek Marek. Marek as well. Lovely right hand from Marek then. Barrier just shrugs it off. Marek's got to be careful of the mouth as well. Wide open in this position. Taking a goose for a front kick and falls back with it. Corner of Barrier calling for him not to get lazy. Does look a little jaded compared to the first round, Ben. And again, he is throwing a lot of power shots there. I think from Barrier's point of view, Ben, I'd like to see him work that jab because it's been hugely effective at times in the second round. He's almost been too inclined to look for the big looping shots. I think you make a very good point with that. Establishing the jab has been the key to everything that Barry has done successfully in this round and indeed in this fight. The jab's where it all comes from. And midway through that last round, he landed several jabs, one right in front of our position that really rocked his man's head back. And what we're noticing with Marek is the way that he's retreating in a, in a straight line a lot of the time with his head up. If Barrier, after he throws that jab, can put two or three punches together, his chances of landing something big are elevated massively. But that being said, as we go into the later rounds, fatigue is going to be a key factor for both guys. Certainly, Marek definitely a tough customer. Showed some great heart to get through these first two rounds. Let's see what this final round is going to bring us. Fight his touch glove to get this third period underway. It's Marek in the black shorts. Ranji Barrier from Leicester Shoot Fighters in the white and purple trunks. Oh, some nice Beautiful shots from both left guys. Hook. Wow, Marek has got a great chin, Ben. He seems to recover so quickly from these shots. Two or three times I thought he's on his way out of there. Barrier once again countering nicely. Lovely right hook from, the, from Marek in between that. He is catching shots himself, but Barrier really just walking through his man at this moment. See Barrier's corner, the Leicester shoot fighters want him to pick that ankle and pull his man away from the cage. So he passes with his left leg. Corner looking for Barrier to suck Marek out off that cage. Impressive performance this from Barrier. He's a very tough opponent in Bartek Marek. Take nothing away from the man, he's coming to fight and fight he has done. Stalemate here from this position, but not for long. It's the mount position now. It's a big ground and pound coming in. And Barrier really establishing this is where he wants to be at this round. Marek really struggling. Is the hand is it under the neck? Real fight this. Great choke defense again from Marek. But now he's shipping some shots. 
Referee basing, taking a close look. I think Barrier should perhaps just strike here, Ben. Over under, and now he goes to the throw. It looks like he's got the choke, but he needs to move his elbow down. And there's the tap. tapping. Fantastic performance from Ranjit Barrier. Of course, commentator's curse. As soon as I said go for the strikes, he managed to just get that short choke in, I think it was. Excellent performance from Ranjit Barrett, but let's take nothing away from Bartek Marek. He came to fight and made Barrier work for it every second of the round. What a tough guy Bartek Marek is. Like you say, he came here and gave no quarter to his opponent. Ranjit Barrier looked at the start of the first round like he could have got his man out of there in the, in the first, but it's a testament to the toughness of the opponent that Marek hung in there for as long as he could. Landed some good strikes of his own, but it just seemed that Barrier was landing the more precise shots. And when he got the back in the third round, the rear naked choke came on very quickly. And as you said, Dave, more of a short choke to crank back for that finish. But a great win once again for Leicester Shoot Fighters, Ranji Barrier. Ladies and gentlemen, our two amateur fighters have worked really hard for this evening. Please show your appreciation for them. And Christian Tyler is recording our two seconds of round number three. here at Fight UK 8 between Masiak Slanina in the camo shorts and Pariah's Maya Dor in the black shorts Dor straight away coming forward oh, there's a nice crisp left lovely left hand for Maya Dor but as we say that great Slanina, take down a mount take down straight into mount let's see what Dor's ground game's like Going for the armbar early. Straight to the army, turns into it well though. Now transitions up, reversed it the other way. This is a tough spot, very tough spot. Slams his man down and lands a hammer fist. Wow, Maya Dor, brutal ground and pound. Sheer strength to get out of that submission, Ben. That's exactly what it was to get him in that position. And some big shots coming in. Wow, look at this ground and pound from Maya Dor. Stanina looking to roll through if he can. Rolls through, Beautiful maybe for a leg lock. Through. No twist in locks, obviously, under these amateur rules. He looks like he's just going for a knee bar there almost. If he can extend it fully, he's got the leg. They're locked in. It's clear that Sanina has got some grappling. Door looking to load up on that right hand. You can see him cocking it already. There's a nice left. Door's going to be looking to finish here. They need to get this fight to the canvas and get it there quickly. Wow, little break in action there. Problem with the glove. Gives Selena. A nice a jab time. from Selena there. Yeah, give him a little time to gain some composure in there. Door's really winging those punches now. Yeah, Every one a haymaker. Knock out Door here. 
Lanina needs to do is get this fight to the canvas and get it there quickly. He knows this. Yeah, he's got to take advantage of this tie-up, and he does, and he moves effortlessly into mount again. And now looking for the key lock if he can. He's got the crank on there. That he's got that locked in. That looks very tight. In. That, that could is a be all she wrote. Ben. That is a very tight-looking key lock. Really struggling. The pressure on the shoulder must be incredible. Maya Dor really toughing this one out. Slanina's almost got it perpendicular. Referee Dean Weir, credit to him, is in a great position. Maya Dor, pure heart again to get out of another Slanina submission attempt. Gives up his back though. Can't be long left in the round, Ben. It's been fast and furious. So Nina's swimming the hands through, and now he's landing a few hammer fists as well. He might. Just looking to loosen his opponent up, see if he can get a hand through. But in this position, all, all he needs to do is continue to land strikes, Dave. Yeah, and looking for the arm, Ben. Dived on that arm, but may have been a little premature. But as I say that, he swung the legs through, and now he's got it. The face down arm bar. Oh, and it's the end of the round. Wow, what a contrast in rounds. You talk about a striker versus grappler matchup, Ben. Wow, look what we've got here. Masiak Slanina showing some excellent submission attempts. And Mayador just going for the kill, Ben, on the feet. Brutal punches and brutal ground and pound at one point. This is very evenly matched, and what a tough round for the judges to score, Ben. I, I'm inclined to maybe say Dor just for the sheer amount of punches landed, but he was in huge trouble with some of those submission attempts. Very, very tough one for the judges to score, obviously. We say hundreds of times, not here to judge this evening commentary position. And from what we're seeing, there's a lot of action going on in between the round. The corners really, Dor's corner really telling him what he needs to do, getting in his face and saying that he needs to pursue that pressure. From Slanina's point of view, Ben, has he weathered the early storm? Because Dor surely can't go at him all three rounds at that pace. He's going to be at his most dangerous at the start of the round, Dor. No question of mind, he's got the power to get his man out of there. But also, no question of mind, Slanina's got the grappling prowess to get his man out of there. Dor throwing heavy. He's having this whole time, and every punch that like you see, a haymaker, clinch, looking for the takedown, and he's got the double unders. Beautiful fall away takedown, lateral drop. Straight into the mount position again. Could be careful of the arm. Diving on it a little bit. And now he's got it. I had an arm choke, it looks like he's got from that position. You can't tough out chokes, Ben. If this is on, Mayadore will be going to sleep. So Nina locking it in, really putting the crank on referee Dean Weir in great position to see Gives the action. Wow. And now here come the punches. This will be the way to finish the fight if you can. Like I say, you can tough submissions out. You can't tough out getting hit in the face. Again, maybe looking for that head and arm there, Ben. What a great bout we have here at Fight UK. Maxi X Lanina taking a Mayadore, the light heavyweight division here. Lanina landing some strikes. He's in the mount position, referee not inclined really to stand him up from here. It's, it's obvious the man on the bottom is just holding on. Stand up in the mount position, maybe it was just to have a look at the glove. It was slightly surprising, there wasn't a great amount of action. Straight back into the double and down Beautiful again. take down from Slanina. That now he's got the choke in tight. Right under the neck. And he's tapping, there's the tap. What a performance from Masiek Slanina. Wow, weathered the early storm of Mayadori, and what a storm it was, Ben. He really came out all guns blazing. Selena did well to survive, looked hurt at times, but the grappling advantage was there for all to see, and eventually got his man via rear naked choke. Excellent fight, and I think both fighters are going to learn a lot from this performance. A real differential in the grappling. Phenomenal performance from Selena.
looked a little lost on the feet at the start, but once he got his man in the canvas and he, he started rolling, it was, for me, Dave, it was when he started rolling for the leg lock specifically, uh, it became apparent that this man did have very skilled grappling. And what impressed me about the rear naked choke was that he isolated the arm with the other foot. The so door only had one arm to defend, and that wasn't enough. Great win for Slanina. here at Fight UK 8. It's Elliot Elliot in the plain black shorts takes on Kev Flanagan in the black and white shorts in this the lightweight division. Two exchange kicks early on. Elliot we've seen before. Now he's got that punching power in his hands. Oh it's some big shots as we say that. Flanagan throwing hard and heavy. And Elliot really struggling there. Flanagan throwing everything into his shots. As you say, Ben, we've seen Elliot Elliot on many occasions. Saw him last out of Fight UK amateur show in a real war. He's got some durability, but Kev Flanagan with those hooks, you can't take too many of them. I don't care who you are. And two just throwing leather here. Some nice knees from the clinch from both fighters. Kev looking to break and fires a knee up the middle. That leaves Elliot scrambling for the takedown. Single, huge pick up and slam. Straight into mount position for Elliot Elliot. I mean, we saw his grappling prowess in his last fight, Ben. He nearly hit a reverse triangle, if you recall. So he definitely has grappling credentials. Be interesting to see Kev Flanagan on the ground. He's in trouble now. Needs to work a hip in, try and get some half guard position back. Does well to transition over, using the head the to do it, and he gets the tap. I asked the question of Kev Flanagan's ground game, Ben. He carried on with that neck, something you often see corner men telling fighters not to do, but to his credit, used it to flip Elliot Elliot over, and almost a, tr a crank as well as a choke, Ben. Unbelievable power, the grit, the neck strength. Kev Flanagan, as you say, jumped on that guillotine and rolled through with it. Elliot Elliot in a mount at one point, but unable to stop. The power coming through in that guillotine of Kev Flanagan, who rolled his man over and took a very well earned submission victory. Great fight from both guys. Flanagan coming out on top with a great submission victory. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're going to have to put your hands together, put your hands together, 
Uh, yeah, training's been going really well. Um, training as hard as ever. Feel good. Um, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, normal, you know, sort of training camp. Really, I uh, feel really prepared. So um, yeah. Yes, yeah, good, good promotion. It's well set up. Like the interviews and everything. It's, so yeah, it's a good show. One of the best around, I think. Oh, it's a really great show. Um, I fought on Fight UK Seven. Um, hospitality in that here was really, really good. Um, so yeah, it's always a great pleasure. I don't know much about him, I know he's unbeaten. I think he's good on the ground. Should be a good fight. Um, I think he's pretty well rounded. Um, you know, it's gonna be a tough fight. Um, yeah, all my teammates, my coach, um, Dean Kiss for sponsoring me. And uh, my mum made me some lovely biscuits for after I weighed in, I like the family room for that. That's it. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Paul Reed, Wes Merch, uh, Guy, LJ, Chris, um, all the other great guys at Olympians who've uh, helped me out. Um, you know, I'd like to uh, thank my sponsor, um, Innerama UK and uh, Supplement Zone. Don't try your hardest. Um, no, it's just, you know, I'm a good fight, you know. Fight you, Top of the amateur card here at Fight UK 8 is an intriguing bantamweight amateur title fight between the challenger Toby Meach and the champion Joe Rice. Great levels of experience we see in both these young fighters' corners. Joe Rice cornered by Jim Wallhead. We see Wes Merch and the team from Olympians MMA in Toby Meach's corner. Yeah, Rice is a very tricky customer, solid in all areas. Very accomplished grappler from what I've seen of him on Fight UK previously. Obviously giving up a bit of reach here to Toby Meach. It's going to be interesting how this stand-up exchange plays out. Nice one-two down the pipe from Toby Meach early. He looks to assert himself. Rice looks incredibly busy with the, the movement. 
not staying in one place. There's a nice combination there. Uppercut over and right. Lightning fast for the man from Bushido. And ends the combination nice with a leg kick. This is a different level of striking we're seeing from Joe Rice. And so often we see with the amateur fighters, Davey really throw themselves into training. The leaps and bounds these guys make are absolutely massive. Yeah, it's like looking at different fighters every time you see them. It really is unbelievable. And as you alluded to earlier, Ben, you know, the teams behind both these guys, very experienced, always looking at working different areas with the guys. And Joe Rice certainly looks very relaxed here on the feet. It's the level change is impressing me from the work for Joe Rice we've seen so far. Everything's ending in a different punch or a different kick at a different level. So many combinations, so many tools it seems in this guy's toolkit. Yeah, Meech to his credit, staying busy as well, looking to pump that jab. It's a very even matchup thus far. I'd like to see Meech look for the low kicks, Ben. He's got the range on him. Maybe look to slow Rice down. Meech having a bit of success there as he paused with the double jab, but got to be careful. Nice, goes to the body and comes in with a 1-2 over the top. Stern leg kick from Rice. Really technical strike in this, David. It just goes to show at the amateur level how potent these guys are. Great work from Rice, ending the combinations on a kick, and then Meech returns the favor. Real treat here at Fight UK. And rocks the head back hard. want to show anybody the level of amateur MMA in the UK do a lot worse than show them this bout not yet fully taken off but what we have seen Ben has been very crisp and very technical from both fighters an excellent match up here it's the first rounds brought to a close very very close round to score this fight just warming up I feel Ben incredibly close great exchanges from both guys and as you say they've a caliber of stand-up that we've both seen grace professional portions of of other cards up and down the country Joe Rice for me the technique that this man's putting forward the way that he's mixing up his combinations he's going to the head he's going to the body he's throwing the leg kicks he's doing everything right but Toby Meech is hanging in there and when he is letting the punches and kicks go himself he's shown that he's got the technique and ability himself the one leg kick Meech landed, he really talked the hip in and over, the classic Thai style. Yeah, I think he's got to take a page out of Joe Rice's book in that first round and try and end on a low kick. He's got some crisp combinations. If he can end on that low kick, as Rice has done on a couple of occasions, he might find some success. As far the whole bout, taking part on the feet. Very interesting to see how this second period will play out I think both fighters will probably be content to keep it standing Ben both have found success neither has been hurt look a very good point I think the difference in this round is for me what Meech needs to do Dave is be first be first in those exchanges get his punches off the left hook really is working nicely for Joe Rice a little defensive maneuver takes that little half step back and just clips it a nice combination four punches there Two to the head, one of the body, and then coming up over the top with an over and right. As we said, Dave, we alluded to in the break, tremendous technical striking match this at the, at the amateur level here at Fight UK. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ben, we all enjoy two sloppy heavyweights slugging it out, but this really is the future of the sport when you just see two guys as well-rounded as this just trying to work each other out. Two great camps in either corner. This is what it's about at the top of amateur level MMA in the UK. And as I say that, Joe Rice turns up the heat and lands a couple crisp punches. Rice in the ascendancy a little bit in this half of the, of the second round. Meech backing up a little. Got to be careful of doing so if he is in a static fashion. He catches the kick and takes the fight of the canvas. Content to let his man up. And now looking for the reversal if he can get it. But Rice drives in and gets a nice takedown. And to pick that ankle. Does well. 
Meets to his credit, looking to pop straight back up. Now gives up his back to Joe Rice. Rice, the hoops go straight in. Unreal technicality from this. Joe Rice, it looks like he's got that locked in. It is on the chin a little bit. Meets is doing the right thing by tucking the chin, but he's going to struggle here. This is on incredibly tight. I've seen guys finish with a choke on the chin, Ben. Rice lets it go momentarily. A lot of time left in this round. Great position here. And of course, Meech is having to carry all the weight of Rice on his back. You make a very good point, that pressure on the chin oftentimes is good enough. We recently saw Paul Redmond take out Lewis Long in that fashion. That chokes on and there's and the tap. Tapped. Absolutely sensational performance from Joe Rice. And is there an amateur bantamweight in the UK, Ben, that can test this guy? Wow. What a performance from Joe Rice, and the question has to be, who is next? Bantamweight, the likes of Paddy Pimblett moving up to the pro ranks. It's hard to see a guy out there for Joe Rice. I'm sure if there is one, Ali Petit, the Fight UK matchmaker, will sort him out. But take nothing away from Toby Meach, Ben. He came, he looked very technical himself, but Joe Rice, he really looks the finished article is an amateur it's an unbelievable performance from Rice College here at Fight UK 8 with the victorious Bantamweight champion Joe Rice. Joe, what a performance. Very close on the feet, but in the end it was your submission skills that were the difference. How did that fight go for you? Talk us through it a little bit. I uh, really enjoyed it. I thought, to be honest, I thought he was going to try and take me down. and uh, But no, he, he stood up and uh, no, a good stand-up battle. I thought I got the edge with the stand-up, land, landed better shots, bigger, bigger kicks. Um, and the corner said, try the takedown. Did obviously didn't want to take it to the floor. So I tried it, got back up, got the choke in. I mean, it's cho choking's hard with the big gloves, but yeah, I I'm happy with it, good. A fantastic performance. And also, so was the game plan originally to stand and bang it out with him? Or were you looking for the takedown as and when they came? Or were you looking to react a little more? Game plan was to not let him take me down. Cause, uh, all, all his footage that I saw, he took his opponent's down. But, yeah, he obviously knew how to watch that and uh, had his own game plan. But yeah, he's a good, good opponent. I'm, I'm pleased, very pleased. Fantastic. And off the back of this great performance, just finally, is there anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Lee Livingston, my coach, uh, Jimmy Wallhead, Mark in my corner, Dean Marcin, everyone who turns up to squad and helps us train. And uh, all, all my friends, there's a lot of people come to watch. It's, it's, it's good to have a good crowd with you. Fantastic. And my sponsor, Dean Kiss, thanks for my sponsorship. Uh, it's expensive training, and that it helps me train the extra money. Fantastic. Don't forget the sponsors. A great performance from Joe Rice here at Fight UK 8. He remains your Bantamweight champion. Um, pretty good, yeah. It's been consistent. Yeah. No injuries, uh, very happy. Yeah, it's been going really good, actually. Got some amazing coaches, so I can't, can't fault that. Very professional. Um, it feels how you imagine a big promotion to um, be run. I'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time, so it'll be definitely a good experience and definitely hope some nice ring girls. <laughs> um, I met Scott yesterday at the weigh-ins. He seems like a very pleasant lad. But obviously, you know, tonight we'll be uh, getting it on. Yeah, again, never underestimate your opponent, no matter what size or shape they look, so I take it as it comes and 
go from there. Fan Corner coaches, um, everyone at Combat and Exercise, um, Rich Yeomans, Dale, um, our strength conditioning coach, uh, Lee Ferry, uh, Rob Stevens, who does uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and uh, Val Denton with the Thai boxing. Just my team, my team, and my work friends who are going to support me tonight, they're all coming down. So I'd like to thank all them for coming down and making a, an appearance, and um, some of my good friends. Not really. Good luck. Referee Basing bringing these two together. Professional portion of a card here at Fight UK 8. And Ben Cartledge with me as always, the dangerous one, David Letherby. And these two wait in no time as it's Farrington initiates the clinch and gets a quick takedown against Scott Kent. Kent looking to make use of that half guard, Ben, but already shipping a few shots. Farrington doesn't look like he's wasting any time here as he moves into mount. With that mount locked as well, got the great bands underneath, and he's looking to flatten his man out. Posture up and land some big shots. And of course, on the professional rules day, we've got the elbows, and of course, we've got the longer rounds. Terrible early position here for Scott Kent. Gives up his back early, and it's Farrington looking for the choke already, Ben, at this early stage. Arena could choke, and that looks incredibly tight. He's really struggling to get out. That he looks could very, go out very here. tight. He could very well go out. He's fine, the hands. Looks like he's going to go. It looks he's like he's going to go. He's gone. He's, he's gone. Asleep. Wow, what a whirlwind performance from Wayne Farrington. Put Scott Kent to sleep. Hugely impressive. What a hard shown by Scott Kent trying to tough that choke out. We saw it, it was getting tired. But credit to Wayne Farrington, Dave. He really stormed the gate, took his man down. And what a performance. Locked on that rear naked choke, anchored his man in a position. And when he got the hands clasped, that was all she wrote. He's got Kent now. Medic's just looking after him there. Fighter safety, of course, paramount. Certainly. It, Scott, it, it'll be okay. It'll certainly be okay. You know, it's, it's nothing like going unconscious from, you know, head trauma or a knockout. It's, it's completely different. I mean, often guys will tell you in, in jiu-jitsu training, I think everybody's been put to sleep now and again, Ben. I'm sure he's just going to take it a moment now, the doctor, just to double check him over, but Scott Kent's going to be fine. Sticks the thumbs up.
here at Fire UK 8 with a victorious Wayne Farrington. Wayne, great result there. Well, did you expect to get the submission locked on so early? No, my plan was always to take him down as quickly as I could and then uh, work some ground and pound and hopefully he would give up a submission. And uh, luckily it just comes sooner rather than later. And a very tough guy. I mean, a, a real feather in your cap getting a submission like this. I mean, what does this win mean to you? Uh, well, it's my debut uh, professional fight. Uh, it's a big weight off my shoulders. But... Um, I realise I've just got to train harder again for the next one. Fantastic. And just finally, is there anyone you'd like to thank uh, coming off the back of this win? Yeah, uh, the coaches, um, Lee Ferry with the boxing, Kevin Webb with the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I've been going to Birmingham Wrestling Club for a bit of wrestling. I uh, just want to thank them all, really. Fantastic. A victorious Wayne Farrington here at Fight UK 8. Yeah, training went good. Um, a lot more conditioning so I don't gas out like I did against Martin Sheldon last year. Um, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I've had uh, sport any fight, same thing. Just training with the same training partners. It's a good camp. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's um, one of the best shows I've fought on. I've fought on a few shows now. Uh, not going to name them, obviously. But they're a lot, a lot more professional than others. Yeah, it's my first time fighting at Fight UK, so I'm excited to fight on a big show like this. Um, ask him, I know ask him, I spoke to him a couple of shows ago, he's a nice lad, um, obviously we're both in here for the same reason, so there's no friends when you're inside the cage I suppose, but I'll be sound with him after. Yeah, he's a, he's a good all round fighter, uh, should be an exciting fight. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people I want to thank, um, obviously my family for supporting me, my missus for helping me out cut weights, sell tickets, all that. Yeah, all my training partners, uh, all the lads, all the management down at UTC, and my family as well. Not really. Just make weight on your next fight. Uh. Yes, Ben, full respect to both these fighters for taking this fight at this stage of their career. Not going to be the last time we say that tonight as well. Excellent matchup on paper. Professional featherweight action about to get underway. Fight UK 8 as we see as Emil Hack from UTC in the grey shorts against Dean Truman in the white shorts. Truman firing out a nice leg kick. Be interesting to see how Dean Truman comes out, Ben. We've seen him, as you say, in that 
brilliant, brilliant bout against Sheridan. Whereas Gas Tank sort of ran out in that fight and then he came back. Massive victory over Paul Ramos. Be interesting to see how measured he is here against a very tough customer in Hohak. We talked about the experience levels. Great experience in both these guys' corners. You see Jim Wallad in the corner of Truman. The UFC's own Vaughn Lee in the corner of Azim Hack from UTC there. So, as we say, guys who fought at the highest level, and that's so many times we see these young professionals are developing at such a quick rate. And a huge shot. Beautiful Hack's caught right his man. Hand. Hack with a beautiful counter shot. Truman seems to have all these faculties about him at the moment. But Hack pouring on the pressure as well. He might. Has to be said, Ben Truman, hugely dangerous off his back. Oh, Hack can't be too hasty looking for the finish here. It was a brilliant shot that dropped his man. Truman very well to get to his feet there in that position. Taking a little time to survive, he looks like a nice safe. short elbow. Beautiful, dirty boxing in there from both guys. To exchange in the clinch, is Truman here? He seems to be doubled over a little bit. I think he's been caught, and that is it. That is all over. Asim Hohak with a dominating performance. He signals to Ali Pati, the promoter at Fight UK. He wants the credit for that. He walks straight out the cage. Very fired up, Ben, and why shouldn't he be? It's a massive win. It'd be interesting to see what happened to Dean Truman, Ben, because he, he did seem in some discomfort, maybe some sort of injury. I'm not sure. He doubled him over straight away. And all hack poured on the pressure. Perhaps what a finish. Perhaps a simple shot to the body, Ben. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's it just hard to see from my vantage point. Just momentarily, Truman just looked in huge distress, turtled up, and how hack was relentless. And it was that big right hand earlier that set the stall out, Ben. Excellent counter punch from the UTC man. What a massive win this is for him. Truman hanging his head. But as you say, got caught as Olhat returns to the cage. What a fight between these two prospects. And we said at the start, David, to credit to both these guys to, to take a fight like this against uh, two very, very dangerous opponents. But what a performance from Azim Olhak. Yeah, too many fighters in the UK willing to do the can can, Ben. And that doesn't wash down Fight UK. Fantastic performance from Asim Hohak. <laughs> Training was going great. Uh, I had uh, great sparring partners uh, going for, to this camp, and uh, uh, I was training with the best. Uh, Lee Livingstone, uh, Jimmy Wallhead, uh, Dean uh, Sugden, my kickboxing coach, uh, plenty of good guys, Bushido, MMA squad. It's been going great, no, coming with no injuries, so I'm healthy and hopefully fully prepared. Yeah, all good. Yeah, um, Training hard like always. Never really stopped training, but just uh, up the uh, intensity during the fight. Uh, it's my second fight for Fight UK and uh, first one was great, very well organized show. I think it's one of the best of the best shows in the UK. So it's a pleasure, always a pleasure. Yeah, it seems good, seems like it's a good show, good venue. Really happy, yeah. Uh, I see, I just haven't seen many videos of him, but I've seen one fight. I think just looking at his record, he's well-rounded, well, -rounded, well Condition is well conditioned, strong, quick, so with good scrap. I'm looking for, forward to it very much. He looks good, tough opponent, um, to do the business there. Not really too, um, yeah, but I'm going to do the business basically. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, my, all my sparring partners and the coaches, uh, as I said before, Lee Livingstone, Jimmy Wallhead, uh, Dean Sugden, uh, my training partners and uh, on top promotion, uh, my management team and uh, that's it. Yeah, all the people that I train with, all my sparring partners, Ronnie Mann, Paul Reed, everyone that's involved. A lot of people that, um, back in Bristol that I train with, uh, Kevin Hagen, all people I train with basically, Pedro Bessa, wrestling coaches, Saeed, Josh, everybody that helps really. Thank you. No messages, we'll all see in the ring how it goes. My opponent? Not really, no, I'm not into all of that. <laughs> Featherweight action about to get underway here at Fight UK 8. Nad Narimani in the white Jacko shorts taking on Marcin Versek in the blackboard shorts. I'm David Leatherby alongside me Ben Cartledge and Ben Marcin a guy we've seen before loves a war. No stranger to a tough fight and he's got one on his hands in Nad Narimani. Very compact fighter. Incredibly powerful and both guys they wing in those short hooks. Yeah, Naramani, Bellator zone, Ronnie Mann in his corner, fighting out of the Iron Man gym. Ronnie, I've seen a lot of his guys out on the domestic scene, Ben. Very tough guys he's producing down there. And like we say, the durability of Marcin is never in question. Lovely right hand over the top from Marcin. These guys swinging early. Marcin looking to come forward a bit, being the ranger that he is. He'll want to keep it on the outside. Establish that jab and flick some nice one twos, but he's having some success with the leg kicks. Wow, these two are swinging, Ben. Both finding success early. As you say the leg kicks could play an important factor in this. Both guys landing. Narimani of the two, the much thicker with a much thicker muscular frame. Incredibly power packed for this weight. Unbelievable to think, like I say, these guys are featherweights, and I think it blow may have strayed a little bit. Yeah, very sporting. Nothing intentional from Marcin at all, I don't think. Willing to stop of his own accord, really, before the referee stepped in, recognizing that that one strayed a little low. Aramani signals he's ready to continue. Marcin flicking that jab out. Naramani looking to counter. That was a nice head kick, there's Naramani though. Marcin's behind it with a left hook. Naramani with a lot of pop in his punches, Dave. Yeah, he definitely looks the more planted of the two, but Marcin finding success as well. A 
lovely jab from Mars in there. Naramani looking for the body kick. I think Ben, whoever settles down into their rhythm first, is going to find some success because both guys willing to throw down a lot of openings here. You're right, and both guys are willing to throw hard as well. I think it's just a question of timing. I think neither man has a nice double jab, as I say that from Marcin Peppers, his man forward. Now Armani looked like he was going to grab the single and go for the takedown, but thought better of it. Yeah, Marcin finding some success with the jab in this period. Like to see him use it more. He's looking for those chopping left hands. Another jab lands through. I think that's the key for Marcin here to get that jab working. Naramani does seem open to that jab down the middle. But is he just trying to blow his man onto one of those big hooks that he throws? Intriguing matchup here at Fight UK 8. Really technical stand up battle this. This time Marcin a bit more confident landing a little. A really stiff jab from both fighters. Corner of Marcin calling for hands and feet. They want him to put those leg kicks together with the punches. Only single shots coming from the outside at the moment. Marcin firing that front kick up and nothing doing. Lands a nice one too, and that's that stunned his man a little bit, I think. Now Marnie really struggling to yeah. deal now. Marcin's hurt his man and he knows it. He swarms him in the corner. Marcin smells blood as he goes in for the kill here on Naramani, who's done well to tie it up, Ben, because as you say, his legs are all over the place for a second there. A nice knee to the body there. It's got to give Marcin some huge confidence there to know he's got the power to really hurt his man. Big takedown, but didn't quite get it. What will that do to the confidence of Naramani, Ben? We've got to think Naramani's caught once again, backs up. Looked a little dazed there, Dave. The ice seemed to go a little bit. He did, and what I like about Marcin this time, Ben, is he's a bit more measured. He knows that Naramani's going to be looking for the takedown when they tie up, so he's just taking his time here on the outside. And especially in the second part of this round on the feet, Marcin's having a lot more joy from the outside. A late takedown, if he can finish it, he gets his man of the canvas. Credit to Naramani up straight away. An excellent bit of game plan in there, if nothing else. For a Moss in there. Had his man hurt a couple of times on the feet. I like the fact that he heard the clapper go, closed the distance and got a really good takedown. Landed a few shots. Yeah, executed the game plan to a T to Moss and Versek. And it's going to be interesting from Naramani's point of view as we said earlier Ronnie Mann hugely experienced top level MMA fighter in his corner surely Ben he's going to be telling his man he's got to get this to the ground at the moment I'm not a fay with Naramani's powers of recovery but on at least two occasions there to me Ben he looked very hurt from punches you make a very good point Marcin not necessarily looking at the more physically imposing of the two fighters but he's shown he's got that snap in his punches and as you say Naramani specifically the first time when he was knocked he, he, he tried to catch his feet coming backwards and he fell backwards it was clear that there was a quite a bit of discombobulation there he really didn't know what was what was going on he did a very good job of tying the fight up there he come out for the second round Naramani in the white shorts, Marcin Wazorczyk in the black shorts. Naramani still looking for that hard chopping left hook from the outside. He does look to have recovered, Ben. He's still got spring in his step. His punches don't look laboured in any way. You do get guys that, you know, recover well from being hurt, and Naramani. As I say that, Marcin shoots in for a takedown. Naramani does well to get back to his feet. Naramani, a great job of humbling through there. Looks an incredibly imposing figure in that clinch, Dave. Yeah, from Marcin's 
point of view, Ben. He's definitely going to have Naramani thinking now, though. He's secured two takedowns, albeit one at the end of the round, and that one then not able to keep his man down. But he's given Naramani something to think about. Good turnaround from Marston that. Lands some short chopping punches and maybe looks to fire a knee and he lands one square in the thigh. And from a fighter's point of view, David, maybe not the most kinetic strikes. You see those strikes to the knee, but they can be very debilitating, especially with a longer fight like we've got now. Three five-minute rounds. We're having the pros and a little bit of blood, it looks like. Yeah, a lot of marking on the face of Nad Naramani. Saying that, also some mouse badola, left eye of Marcin as well. It's a testament to what an even fight this has been. You know, back and forth exchange. Marcin throws a right hook and finishes it up with a kick, but doesn't quite land. Both guys swinging for the fences. Naramani really means that left hook, Ben, when he throws it. Lovely body kick. Marcin not really finding the rhythm that he managed to find in the second half of the first round. Needs to get that jab working again. That was where everything was coming from in that first round, and that was the success that he had. It was a nice leg kick, but nothing really doing on it. Naramani looking to employ a bit of head movement. And you're right, Dave, you make a very good point. Naramani's powers of recovery seem very, very notable because he's come out in the second round completely fresh, almost in a, in a very similar manner that he came out the first. With a nice right hand. Another kick to the body. It looks like you say a little bit of blood underneath the eye of Marcin, it seems. Nad Naramani has landed a few more strikes this round. And obviously, we say it several times, Dave. A very, very close fight for the judges to score. Yeah, and with about this close, Ben, sometimes it can just come down to the angle. I mean, for me personally, I think Naramani's getting the best of the second period thus far. I'd give the first to Marcin, so very even here on my non-judging scorecard anyway. Marcin coming forward once again. Naramani swinging hard, and Marcin sticks him with a nice right hand and catch him with the left coming in. Naramani looks like he's got the he's got the hands gripped, and now he's got the takedown that he was looking for. And now we'll see what Naramani's got from on top. Yeah, Naramani's corner delighted with the takedown. Now let's see what he can do with it. Corner corner for elbows here from Naramani. Heavy looking ground and pound from Naramani. With some nice elbows. It's that push off elbow. Certainly seems like there's a lot on the mouthpiece comes out. It's a lot of blood, Ben. I think it's coming from the nose of Naramani. It's hard to see from here. But a lot of blood. He did spit his gum shield out as well. I'm not sure whether it's bothering him. As the shot came in. Naramani once again looking to land those elbows. Very active off his back is Marcin Versic. Naramani, a real imposing presence from the top, Dave. Looking for the armbar. Swims his way around, but can't quite get it. Now Naramani gets to side control. And that's the end of a very close second round. Wow, both these guys are running their money tonight. On a knife edge as it is, a dominant third round could be the difference between success and failure in this one. Great to see the fighters touch glove. Oh, nice one too to start things off from Marcin. Naramani looks to land himself. In the second round, Marcin almost got, got sucked into playing Naramani's game a little bit of staying in that very close range and throwing those 
shorter hooks, whereas in the first round he had more success. But here we see a pick up and takedown as he got his man down. A great takedown defense. But what persistence from Nad Naramani. And from Naramani's point of view, Ben, he's right in the home corner there. He can sit there, take instructions. His coaches can point out things that he perhaps can't see. Any submission attempts from us and anything like that, they're going to be on top of it from there. Great position here at the start of the third for Nad Naramani. Hard to see from a vantage point, Ben. I think Marcin... There's a lot of blood coming from the nose of Nad Naramani. I think one of those shots has caught him. Naramani looking to land those short chopping elbows. What a bloody war this has been, Dave. Yeah, and from Marcin's point of view, obviously with the, the blood and the sweat and everything into this third period, it's so difficult to secure any kind of submission or transition with a guy that sweaty and, and, and with blood on top of you. Even hard to push somebody like that off. Zaramani dives, doesn't quite find it. Marcin now in the mount position and here come the punches. Some big shots, Naramani really struggling right in front of a commentary position. Marcin no hooks in at the moment. Good job by Naramani to avoid giving up his back there and standing up. Excellent work, now looks to pummel in that arm. Great work from Naramani getting back to his feet, Ben. A real good job from both guys in that situation. And what a war this has been. A real battle of attrition here. Naramani maybe going for the takedown if he can get it. Great takedown defense from Marcin. All credit to him at this late stage. Got the single. Maybe he'll look and try and get it up into the high crotch if he can. Picks his man up. Yeah, Marcin looking to keep that leg on the outside of Naramani's leg. Use it as his own balance. Did very well there. What takedown defense from Marcin. Yeah, fantastic work. Just uses that leg, just rides it on the outside of Naramani's leg. Almost using him as a, a sort of tripod to stand up himself. And now using the underhook to push him back to the cage. Close, close round this. Another close round in this fight. And some big knees up the middle. Nothing doing for Naramani as Marcin pushes the pace a little bit more now. As we say, with this fight being as close as it is, this is still anybody's fight, anybody's round. Great bit of time. Beautiful double leg from Nad Naramani. How big could that be in this fight? In a fight this close, Dave, that could easily be the differential. We talked about the powers of recovery, the explosion that Naramani had on that takedown. Unbelievable. This late stage, and that's so often the difference between when we talk about fine margins in winning and losing, having that power, digging deep low enough to get that explosion to drive your man of the canvas. Yeah, fantastic shows of heart from both fighters. I think the unfortunate thing from Marcin's point of view is he wasn't able to find that fluidity in strikes that he did in the first period. He sort of let the jab and, and the leg kicks get away from him. And Naramani's taken full advantage. Naramani's got his man's arm locked as well as tied up the leg as well. Naramani's in a very good spot here if he can lift himself up. This corner screaming for a heavy base and that's exactly what he's got. Look at the posture of this man. Marcin doing a good job though, trying to get his back to the case to use that to stand up. Ten second clacker goes. Marcin trying to almost roll for a Kimura there. Still trying things at this late stage. Testament to what heart Marcin has himself and both these fighters, Ben. Wow, what a close fought, hard fought battle this has been. Nad Naramani, Marcin Versek, who'd be a judge? Incredibly tough one to call. Marcin Versek really left it all out there in the line. As you say, in the first round, dictated the stand-up. Took it to his man, 
but it wasn't until the second round when Naramani not only found a bit more fluidity of the feet, he let the takedowns go. And I think that is the differential in this fight. How the judges see it, however, is completely different. Both fighters have raised their hands post-bout. The crowd appreciating a sterling effort, whichever way this one goes, Ben. It's a great effort from both these guys. A great, a great advertisement as well for just how deep the featherweight division is here at Fight UK. Obviously, the champion, Saul Rogers, you can imagine, will be watching this one with a great deal of interest. Two very worthy challenges for his title. We hand it up to the MC for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you agree. What a fantastic three, five rounds of the way of Let's give a little bit of a big round of applause for the people. Real side judges are real side to decide the contest. They have returned. In favour of our winner from the blue corner, Matt Marimani. Ben College here at Fight UK with a victorious Nad Narimani. Nad, what a fight that was, an absolute war. Talk us through what you're feeling like right about now. Feeling good right now, yeah, it was a hard fight, the toughest fight so far. He hits hard, man. But I hung, it, hung in there, you know. Thought I'd go get some takedowns to secure the win, like, so just took him down, you know, lose my wrestling. But yeah, it was a fucking tough fight, I'm sorry. It was a great performance, certainly a great performance. Was the game plan to take him down throughout the whole thing, or did you think you were going to be able to stand and bang it out with him? I was going to try and stand and bang it out with him. I, I, I did well, but, you know, he hit hard, so I thought I need to take this down just to sort of secure the win. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And finally, is there anybody you'd like to thank coming off the back of this fantastic victory? Ronnie Man definitely comes with me through a fight, trains with me all the time, sparring and everything. Uh, Paul Reed, people up Olympians, all over really, all over Bristol. I train with people all over Bristol. Yeah, everyone really that helps, you know, especially Ronnie comes here, puts his time in, effort, you know, and training and everything. He's a top man. Thank you. Fantastic. Fight UK, Ben College here with the victorious Nad Naramani. Uh, it's been really good. I've had I've ended up having about three mini camps because of the thoughts I fell through. So I've been able to have a long time to prepare for this fight since the last fight which was June. Well, I only took the fight on three weeks' notice. So, but I'm generally fit all year round to be fair. So it was just a case of sharpening a few bits here and there, and that's it really. It's a big thing for me. Uh, all the shows I fought on before have all been like smaller promotions and local promotions. So this is the first national promotion with press and dealing with things like that, which is good for me at a young age. Well, I'll find out later, won't I? It's my first time at Fight UK, so. <laughs> I think he's very experienced and uh, took a tough fight uh, to the floor right level. It's a challenge of opponents. I think he's going to be more experienced and tougher uh, than Josh, but maybe not as athletic or as technical, so it's a different fight. Uh, he's a tough kid, nice lad. He's got some slick jiu-jitsu skills, but I look way more experienced than a lad, and you'll see that tonight. Yeah, uh, just my family, all my teammates, and all the people that come to support me tonight. Oh, all my training partners at Spartan MMA, Shrewsbury, Muay Thai, uh, my sponsors, Telford MMA Store, and Funky Gums, and Spartan MMA. Uh, no, I'll do this all in the cage. Chris, you're a nice lad, no hard feelings, but the belt's coming home with me. Ladies and gentlemen, MMA fans, this is a title fight for the Fight UK MMA Flyweight title.
And this match is refereed by Mr. Dean Lee from Manchester. Firstly, fighting out of the blue corner on the front side, representing Spartan MMA, is waiting for this contest, 124.4 pounds. First of our three professional titles to be decided here at Fight UK 8. His top 20 ranked flyweight Mark Handley from Spartan MMA takes on Chris Mir from Team Pariah. Handley, a guy we've seen up and down the country a lot of times, very well respected, a real good skill set. He won't have come here to lose, but in Chris Mir will be taking on a, a guy that a lot of people are talking about, an un undefeated young prospect yes Ben I think Mia certainly facing his toughest test today in Mark Hanley I think it's fair to say looking for the submission early looks to lock on the triangle and he needs to posture himself up Mia's really got that locked in tight he's hooked the leg this could be all she wrote early on Ben Handley really struggling in there, needs to try and posture himself up if he can. Try and get a, get a bit of space in there. And there's the tap. Wow, what a performance from Chris Mir. We said it was his toughest test of date. And wow, did he pass it with flying colors, Ben. A brilliant quick fire submission victory to take the flyweight title, wow. Silence the crowd here. What a performance from Chris Mir. As you said, Dave, the toughest test of his career. And the second the fight at the floor, it was Hanley who initiated the grappling to the floor with a beautiful sacrifice throw and ended up on top where he wanted to be. But Chris Mir, what a performance. Threw that triangle in over the top, locked it in position. And Chris Mir becomes your new Fight UK flyweight champion. Fight UK flyweight champion Chris Mir. Chris, how does that sound? Superb, dream feeling, really is. Did you expect the fight to go that quickly? Handley's a very tough guy, he's ranked in the top 20 in the UK. I mean, were you planning to take it to the ground early or did you want to stand up with him for a little bit? I actually wanted to try and stand because a lot of people know me as a ground fighter and I've been working my boxing thoroughly for the past six to nine months. It's improved through the roof, so I wanted to try and stand, but he took me down, that's part don't go to the ground unless he's going to deal with it. Oh, that's a fantastic. Just on the on the end of it now, is there anybody you'd like to thank on the back of this? A fantastic victory for you. Uh, all my coaches, family, the new gym that we've just started up. We've been existing for a while, but Team Paroya, it's a new gym. We've had three wins tonight. Watch out, Kevin Webb's station, great ground game. And also Hall Green Boxing Gym, where we do all my boxing work. Big gym in Birmingham. So, like, thanks to them. Fantastic. Ben College here with your new Fire UK. Flyweight champion. Um, been going well. Um, stepped up like the boxing. Um, carried on with like the B, uh, BJJ. It's going well. Um, fitness is good. So yeah. Um, well, 
It's my fourth outing here for Fight UK. Same old, very good setup. Um, you know what you're getting, very professional. I know he's Polish, I know he's young, I know he's heavy, um, I know his record. Um, he's not been tested, I don't think, but he looks good. Looks a good, good fighter. All my coaches, you know, um, all my family, friends, um, kind of supported me. You know, long, hard training sessions, late nights. Um, work have been good, you know, there's everybody. No, no messages, um, you know, let my fighting do all my talking for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mason from Birmingham is the man in charge of this type of bounce, which is due to the roadside by Steve Cookhamlet, Mark Wesson and Chris Watts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is co-main event of the evening time. I'm Ben College alongside me, Dangerous David Letherby. Speaking of Dangerous, the two guys we've got in there at the moment, Michael Andrzejczak in the white and James Horrell in the black. Two colossal heavyweights. Horrell we've seen before, got knockout power. But in Andrzejczak, he's facing a guy that a lot of people are talking about on the European scene, Dave. Yeah, both these guys are capable of finishing this fight anywhere. Andrzejczak, in particular, Ben, has some decent submission wins as well. As we say that, goes in, looking for the takedown on Harrell. Secures it well, and it's Andrzejczak working in top position. Andrzejczak working incredibly calmly from this position. Passes the leg nicely. And this is exactly where you don't want to be. A nice knee to the body there. As you say in heavyweight, heavyweight MMA, exactly where you don't want to be underneath, especially early. A huge heavyweight like Andrew Zak. Looking to lick the hands together, maybe isolating a head and arm. Horrell has desperately got to stop that right leg passing through. If Andrew Zak can get himself a mount this early, yeah, my initial thoughts, Ben, was Horrell's very frantic on the bottom. Face sort of grimacing, definitely trying with all his might to get out of this position. In the contrast, Andrzejczak looking quite calm. Andrzejczak just using forearm pressure. Wow, even the forearm pressure, Ben, looks absolutely brutal there. And Hurl being up against the real stiff elbow to the jaw there. Hurl's mouthpiece out a little bit, just a testament to that pressure, and this is dangerous. That head being pressed up against the cage there at an angle. Reminds me a bit of Tank Abbott back in the day. Not a place you want your head to be for massive unit pushing down on you. James Hurl in a really tough spot here. The gum Between. shields come out. Oh, that was a thunderous left and hand. And Andrzejczak's got the choke lock to one with straight away. He got his arm underneath. 
And the power, he doesn't even seem he's got the hooks in. It's a strange position. It's more of a crank, and that is unbelievable. Wow. Sound the alarm, Ben. Heavyweight prospect, Mikhail Andrzejczyk. Wow. James Harrell just looks absolutely bemused because Andrzejczyk just ran through him. And, uh, you know, we spoke about his grappler, Ben. He's also got knockout victories in his resume. Six on the bounce now for Andrzejczyk. The bulk of which coming from stoppages. And as we say, the, the knockouts, the submissions, they all come. What a handful this guy is. And as you say, David, for me, it wasn't even the fact that he had submission holds locked in at the first place. It wasn't the fact that he, he used the position so well, as you say, something as simple as, as forearm pressure that he had against the throat. Horrell really uncomfortable to the point where he spat the mouthpiece out. Thunderous ground and pound from this monstrous heavyweight. <laughs> Yeah, training's been great, you know, um, the usual to 12-week training camp in knots with uh, some of the best fighters in the, uh, in the international fighting scene, you know, like Jimmy Warlaird, Andre Winner, uh, go on, it's just been absolutely fantastic, you know. Uh, training's going well, I did a full eight-week camps, injury-free, had great, great sparring partners, you know, at UTC gym, so I'm pretty much, pretty much ready to go. Uh, Fight UK is good, you know, um, it's a the promotion I find is is always very professional. Um, I fought here several times. I had my first semi-pro fight here. I had my, I made my pro debut here, so I feel like home right here. So I, I'm looking forward to fighting for the fans here in Leicester. Uh, Panic's good, you know. Yannick, um, in his own right, he's, he's won his fights, so that's great. We're both undefeated. Um, he's got a good skill set. You know, obviously, I, I've I look at where is um, where I think his faults are, and I'm gonna I'm gonna emphasise my skills onto them. Um, Mahalam, decent, nice guy. I like him a lot. Um, he trains a rough house. I've trained there before, so he's got, he's got good good, good, good uh, group guys to train with. So, so I've I train at UTC as well. Um, um, he's got a great stand up, great kickboxing skills. I've got a good boxing background as well, and a jiu jitsu background. So it should be a good matchup for the fans for sure. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, which are EES Recruitment, so Steve Epton, Westwood Lakes, um, and James and Edwards, estate agents, and also the fight team that, that have supported me throughout uh, the camp. Uh, my girlfriend Carolina for um, supporting me as well. Um, pretty much just uh, my missus, you know, for de dealing with me. Uh, the gym, UTC, Mark Hardwick, that's about it really. Just bring your A game, man. Just bring your A game, please. No, no, really. Just let's, 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 let's bring it for a good show for the fans. Somebody, really. It is main event time here at Fight UK 8. One of the most anticipated matchups for a very long time. I'm Ben Cartledge. With me, as always, is the dangerous one, David Letherby. And Dave, what a fight this is. Yannick Bahadi from UTC in the black shorts against Matt Hallam from Team Warhead in the blue and red. Yeah. The anticipation for this bout, Ben, has been massive. Both these guys, legit prospects. Matt Hallam, quickly off the bat, trying to swarm. Yannick Bahati here. A low blow there. Dean Weir steps in. I'm sure it was accidental, but I was just saying, Ben, furious start to the fight, but both these guys, legit prospects people are talking about. We said it early on in the, in the night, credit to them for taking this bout at this stage of their career. There's a lot of people in the UK picking fights on their, you know, on their journey, not these two. As you say, Dave, Alan came storming forward. He looked like he had his man 
rocked a couple of times with a few shots, but one of those knees he threw from that clinch, straight below the belt. It's Yannick now making the most of the five minutes that he's got. Got to say, Ben, Matt Hallam looks absolutely huge at this weight, at middleweight. You know, we've seen Yannick before. He's not a small fighter himself, but Hallam absolutely dwarfing him in the size. Matt Hallam, a guy who has fought at light heavyweight before. Unbelievably, Dave actually did come in a bit under for the limit. I believe he was 182, 183 that, in that neighborhood. Um, that is astonishing to me. Oh, Yannick landed a right. But Yannick on the defensive. Matt Hallam really pushing it forward, pushing the pace, and a big takedown from Yannick. Great sprawl from Matt Hallam to avoid that takedown. And as you say, Yannick, that no small man himself. Both of these guys, huge middleweights. Hallam's got to be careful of those knees. Obviously, received the warning for the one. He doesn't want to let another one stray. As it's Bahati who's pushing forward. Maybe looking to drop down with the single. And we say it so many times, Dave, this element, maybe not the most kinetic element in mixed martial arts, but certainly one of the most physically demanding. Yeah, certainly. I'm very impressed with Yannick here, how he's able to push Hallam to the cage. As I say that, the guys separate. Hallam looking for uh, some more of those knees. And you're right, Ben, he's got to be very careful with those knees to the inside thigh. It's very easy for them to stray. And as you say, he's already had the warning. That's it, yeah. A point deduction could be crucial in a close battle like this. Yannick dropping down. Nice wide base from Hallam. Yannick's going to struggle unless he switches to the single, which he does. High crotch. But as you say, I mean, the pure, the pure size and power of someone like Hallam, coupled with the athleticism and the takedown defense, means that getting that takedown might not be an easy proposition. Yeah. It's certainly not a ref period for Hallam, though. He's having to put everything into this defense at the moment. The crowd going wild here in the Athena. Bahati pushing forward, and Hallam throwing some nice knees. Bahati covering up, and he's got to really look to lock his man up. He cannot let a powerful man like Matt Hallam loose with the punches. We've seen him finish fights from this position. The slightest gap, and Matt Hallam is looking to land bombs. Tough position for Yannick, up against that cage. Scrambles beautifully. Wild. Beautiful, using the single to get back to his feet there. Great work from Bahati. Trying to grab his hands together if he can and complete the double, which it looks like he has done. What a turnaround from Yannick Dave in a really tough position. And Matt Hallam, credit to him getting up to his feet. This is everything we thought it would be, the close back and forth battle in two real high-level middle, middleweights with experience that belies the relatively short professional records. Both of them active on the semi-pro quite large. Yannick Hurt, it looks like he's taking a shot there. Hallam looking to pile the punches on and the pressure. I think it was possibly a knee to the body, Ben, because if he did pull guard, it was very foolish from Bahati because we've seen Hallam very dangerous on top. That being said, active guard being shown from Bahati now. There's a bit of... Looks like a bit of tape out of yeah. one of the gloves, is it? I think yeah. Dean Weir spotted it. It looks like it's, is it, I think it's come free itself. Hallam looking at landing elbow over the top. Dean Weir, as you say, taking a close look at that right glove of Bahati. Probably going to call a momentary stop to this and, and just nip that off. But, you know, it's so hard in a position like this. You Especially when you've got powerful high. guys like Matt Hallam on top, landing this ground and pound. I'm looking to arc the elbows over. But Bahati, a man we've seen with submissions off his back. He's got triangles, he's got Kimuras we've seen him use to sweep. Very, very durable fighter. As we see swimming the legs up, controlling the head. Maybe That's looking under who can sweep. A technical battle that belies the size almost of these two Goliaths. You look at both of them and think they're just going to come in there with thunderous punches and be all power and muscle, but great work shown by both guys. Bahati off the bottom, Dave, a, a real active guard. Yeah, I think it was important for Bahati. I think 
perhaps he realised he was always going to have to weather the early storm here against Matt Hallam. You know, Hallam's got early finishes on his resume. Uh, the way Bahati came out, I, I think he was expecting the, the fast and furious attack, and he's done well. He's took little damage in that first round. Possibly, you know, dropped the first round due to be being on his back for, for most of it. But, you know, a tight round. But from his point of view, he's still very much in the fight. And, you know, the longer it goes on, the less KO power you would expect Matt Hallam to have. Because, as we often see with the very muscular fighters, you know, they they don't quite have as big a must uh, gas tank. Excuse me. Um, so it could be interesting the further this fight goes on. Like you say, the first time in recent memory, certainly, that Hallam has been pushed into those later rounds. We've seen him with first round stoppages. He fought on the uh, second fight, UK Amateur Championships, and won with the TKO in around about 30 seconds. Fought on fight UK 5, and I think he won in the first round with another stoppage. He's since fought in a variety of shows and won in similarly bombastic fashion. It'll be good to see with Hallam his conditioning, what kind of shape he's come in. And how he, how he copes with the adverse pressure, obviously, used to getting guys and really hurting them. And, and most guys, as most guys would, really wilt under his punishment. Yannick Bahati still there in the second round. And looking to box from the outside early. Those knees up the middle from Matt Hallam are brutal to the body. Bahati can't take too many of those. A nice inside leg kick. Oh, he's swinging that over and right. And throwing a head kick now. Hallam's corner screaming at him to keep the hands up. The right hand is awfully low. And you might have called it, Dave. Is conditioning going to be a factor in this one? Yeah, it's always the worry when you're looking at a, a fighter like Hallam with his resume because you can do all the hours in the gym, but as, as many pros will tell you, it's the time in the cage that counts. Bahati moving to side control, Dave, excuse me, with a great takedown. And now he's looking to work, and we've seen him finish fast. Here's the mount. Beautiful mount from Yannick Bahati, reminiscent of a BJ Penn style mount, that stepping over the legs. Absolute beautiful work. And this is where we'll see from Matt Hallam. He is tough as the hammer. Is he tough as the nail? Bahati can't really make a lot of this push until he postures up, but he keeps on him. Great work from Hallam there to get it back to half guard. Oh, he's thrown some nice shots to the body with some knees. What a war between these two middleweights, Dave. Absolute fantastic show from both these guys, and it's as close as we thought. Definitely sense. Bahati's definitely had a, a raising confidence, I think, Ben, this round. Oh, he's swimming underneath, dives on the guillotine, Look he's got the it! That he's, looks got, close. he's jumped on it, that is incredibly tight, and he's got the guard locked in, maybe just using it to sweep now. What a sweep from Bahati that was! And now he's got his standing jumps again, and straight again. in! There's no arm in this time! Oh, pops his head out, Matt Hallam. Excellent job! Wow! Yannick Bahati's grappling, Ben, looks excellent. And, you know, likewise, you have to credit the defence here of Matt Hallam. From Bahati's point of view, Dave, he dived on that submission. Yeah, and you know, the advantage, we spoke about it earlier on the night for Matt Hallam now, is he, he's in that corner now. He's got his coach, Jim Wallhead, there, and he can, you know, he can run. What he's looking for, a good position for him to be, because Bahati's still looking active, maybe reaching over. He's still going to set up. up. A beautiful sweep, a nice back elbow there. A beautiful old school sweep from Yannick Bahati. Lovely work, and now he's in mount. And this is a tough spot, he's isolated the arm. Looking for the arm bar, Ben, I think he's raising up there. The arm bar's there, I think, is he just going to sit there and rain down the punches? This is a bad spot for Hallam. Real testing times here for the team Wallhead middleweight, as Yannick Vahadi looks to rain down the punishment. Hallam is really in a lot of trouble here, he's got to keep moving. Oh, that's a big elbow. Beautiful elbows over the top. Dean Weir having a word. 12 to 6 elbow there. Oh, he's looking to pass the legs if he can. Maybe for a mounted triangle. 
And maybe he's just going to stick with the punches. He's having a lot of success. Bahati relentless. And it's those and elbows. Maybe the rear naked there. choke. And there's oh. another elbow. He's got the arm tied up. And I think there's a cut that's opened. Yannick Bahati is pouring it on. How is Mahalem surviving this? Oh, and misses a huge elbow. Wow. And, and that is it. That's got to be it. Relentless barrage of elbows. Yannick Bahati is really pouring the pressure on here. You've got to think a stoppage has got to come soon. And that is it. Steen Will steps in. Yannick Bahati. Fight UK middleweight champion. Wow. What a fight. What was that of Matt Allen's forehead, Ben? Wow. And he had to come through the fire to get it against a very tough guy. He hung in there after a tough first round. And that ground and pound was brutal from the top. Huge elbows arcing across. Yannick Bahadi is your new Fight UK middleweight champion. He showed a, a calmness, Ben, benefit of his record. He, that first period, I definitely think he was out to, you know, weather the storm of Matt Hallam. And he did that, Ben, and came back in the second round. And when he got his opportunity, he just stepped it up a gear. And that's one of the most relentless ground and pound finishes I've ever seen live at a fight. The elbows, the ground and pound. Credit to Hallam for defending as long as he did because they were some brutal shots coming down. The blood on the canvas is testament. What for Yannick? Tough, tough guys here. The Fight UK 8 main event. Yannick Bahadi, the champion. Let's talk about Matt Hallam, Dave. What a chin he showed. The heart was unreal when he was on the bottom. But from Bahati, he did everything that he needed to do. He withstood that onslaught. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you were kind of around. Were you rocked a little bit there when you were going back? I wouldn't say I was hurt, but he, he jabbed in there. I couldn't see for a second. So when he hit me low, that was, I was quite happy with that, really. But I just kept my composure. I knew that his ground game would be weak. So I just took my time and listened to my coaches, and I got to take out there. Was it the game plan to take him to the canvas down and look to expose the weak point that you're still? I, I, I thought I had the skills to beat everywhere. In my body, I knew my body was better. I knew he has a really lazy job. But for some reason, I was a bit rusty. I haven't forced since February. I've been injured, so. And finally, just to finish up, a great performance here from you. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I want to thank uh, Silk, Vaughn, uh, Leo Carr for covering me, UTC, all the fans supporting me, and uh, Mark Hoffman for helping us with the gym and stuff. Fantastic. Ben College here with your new middleweight champion of Fight UK 8, Yannick Bahadi.